Good morning, Vendors, and welcome to another video. It's your favorite <laughs> fancy faces among comma. And today I'm here to talk to you guys about something really close to my heart. Um, so I'm gonna do a two part video about the impact of sexual harassment and rape and so forth has on a person's life. It's gonna be like a two part video. I want to talk about my experiences and then I want to talk about the impact um, all of my experiences have had on me and my mental health and my life overall. Okay, so I am 27 years old. Yeah, I'm 27 years old. <laughs> I'm 27 years old and growing up, I've just like, I grew up in a Christian home with Christian parents and all of the you know and it was all great and everything and i just grew up and i always told myself you know what me i want to save myself from marriage i'm gonna meet the love of my life when i'm like i don't know like in varsity when i'm like 18 or whatever and then get married at 21 when i graduate you know just i had well i thought i had my whole life planned out and under control unfortunately it was really not that way so just generally growing up i grew up amongst like you know how black people are like it takes a village to raise a child and whatever so i always had like these cousins and uncles and brothers and all of these people around us and it got awkward for me because i've always been like a i grew up like very tomboyish right not really into the whole boy thing i was not interested in dating i was you know i was just living my own life honestly okay cool um fast forward to thing in my teenage years one of my cousin's brother um starts saying things like he wants to spend time with me outside of me being there with my friend so i'm just like oh that's weird why would you want to do that because also this person's like old like it's probably like my my eldest brother's age or something and my eldest brother is like 42 so you can imagine right um the age difference which i can't seem to calculate right now <laughs> but yeah like he's that old and i was just like you oh, know and we're used to like hang out with him and his girlfriends and stuff so i don't see anything weird until this one time we're like hanging out and then he tries to kiss me i'm like what is happening right but then also i'm like okay i don't know who would i tell because now you know we grew up in a society where everyone is just like asking you um why were you there why wasn't other people there and i was just like no man there's something weird about what just happened but like who am i going to talk to you about about it right so sharp i carry on with my life and whatever but now this man kept on doing really weird things like i have this one memory where i remember we were in a car and we we're going to buy ice cream or whatever and it was like a full car you know it's like december vibes and everyone is home so we're sitting in the car and i remember sitting on top of his lap because we we're all going to stairs does this man not like put his hand inside of my skirt and he's busy trying to do whatever and i remember feeling so uncomfortable and when we were on the way back i was just like i don't want to sit on top of him i want to sit somewhere else or i want to go home and everyone and everyone's like I and then this one what's going on but again he didn't think that he did anything wrong because i even remember him speaking to me like later on and he was like why are you acting like you didn't like what happened in the car? And I was like, I don't want to talk about this. I'm not going to talk about this. And I moved on with my life. I spent less time at my friend's house. Always avoided going to my friend's house. Because I was just like, I don't like it. Avoided the brother. And it was just bad. Shabu. Um, a few years later, really proud of myself. Because I'm just like... <laughs> My virginity is still intact. I don't have any problems. Um, you know, cool. And generally, I'm staying away from boys. If I am dating someone, I always make it out there clear that you are never going to sleep with me, right? 
so now um in metric it was in metric same year june holidays um because i remember it wasn't it wasn't june holidays i still remember it was on the 5th of june because it was one of my friend's birthday there was this guy that i was um seeing because we're just like vibing on mix it and whatever and he used to say he likes me and i used to also like him because i was like oh, okay cool it seems like a really nice guy you get me and 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 so this one time this guy comes and um he comes to see me we take a walk and whatever so in the midst of the walk um he's like no let's walk right through the graveyard in my head i'm like why are you walking into the graveyard like, what what okay cool we walk and then just behind the graveyard it's like grass and whatever and then we're chilling there and we're just talking i'm like okay cool and then he starts to like kiss me and everything and he tries to like finger me and i'm like hey what is going on and he's like but i thought you said you like me i'm like yes but um what does that have to do with what you're doing and he's like no um this is what people who like each other do i'm like um i'm 17 i think i'm pretty clued up on what people who love each other do and i don't want to do it and he's like no don't worry it's not that deep and it's not whatever and you're gonna enjoy it we're literally outside on the grass and this person is busy trying to insert his penis into my into me right and it was so painful and i'm like dude can you please get off of me and eventually i um like after like crying and just being uncomfortable i'm like i'm going home and he was just like where are you crying also maybe if we were not outside it was going to be more enjoyable and i'm like sir i don't care how enjoyable that you think this is one this is not how i want to lose my virginity two this is not where i want to do it and this is not even fun i don't want to do it again leave me alone i remember getting home and i told my friend who was it's her birthday that day i was like yo chomi this happened to me and i was just miserable and i was just crying and i didn't have anyone to talk to because again this is going to say happy with this gent right okay cool fast forward to end of the year i'm on a trip with a friend of mine um and family and everything and my crush was there so i'm obviously really excited my crush and his cousin and everything so you know how like young ones we're being rebellious and they're like oh let's go out we go play pool we go have shots and it's nice but we don't get like drunk because we just i remember we had about two to three shots and we we're fine after that we went to the beach and then when we get to the beach one of the cousins the one who's not my crush is like kissing me and he's just like telling me that he likes me and i'm like um i don't know eh? because also like my crush is there and i'm like also why like, hmm, where is this coming from then eventually like when we're going home and when we get home in the parking lot um my crush tells my like my my, my friend because you know you go, go to the, go inside she's coming i just want to speak to her and does this man not put pin me towards the, the car and he starts kissing me and he's trying and i'm like fighting him off of me and he's like why are you pretending like you don't want this and i'm like i'm not pretending like i don't want this i know that i don't want this so i go back um eventually after fighting him off i run inside and again i'm like crying and now also this is very awkward because this is my friend's cousin so i'm crying and i, I remember i log into mix it and i write her a text and i'm like um and i'm telling her and i'm like hey friend when we're outside this happened wada, wada, wada. and my friend is just like um i feel like you wanted it because this is your crush and I, I i can't believe you know that you would say that this happened and whatever and i was just like okay you know again i can't go and report this because if my own friend is refusing to believe that this was a thing how is anyone else gonna believe me and so forth so again kept quiet don't tell anyone and i moved on with my life and i went to varsity and 
again i'm just like really not interested in relationships i'm not up for it and whatever and now i'm just living my own life happy and personally and honestly i'm just thinking i'm waiting for the love of my life to just like fall from the sky and marry me and <laughs> and life just goes on but it doesn't happen that way i met a guy and everything happens and this guy is always convincing me to go to his room and i don't want to because i know when you go into a room with a guy what's going to happen so i'm like no thank you i'm not interested um so we always meet up in daylight always meet up in crowds always meet up around people because i'm just like i don't want to be alone with you because i don't want to be in a position where i'm gonna have to say no and you're not gonna hear my no but now this one day i remember i was coming back from netball practice and he was busy in a study group and he says to me that he forgot his calculator in his room so i'm like oh, okay cool um i don't think i'm gonna see you again so i'll probably see you later and he's like no please accompany me i'll just go really just picking up the calculator and we're coming back you know and also i'm thinking yeah which he's busy with study group and i'm smelling because i've just come back from naval practice like oh whatever so it'll be like a two minute thing and we'll be back we go to his res and we get there and he convinces me to go inside i'm like oh there's no need to just go get the calculator whatever and he's like no man stop being weird blah, 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 blah. so i go inside and whatever and he's like busy looking for his calculator so i'm just sitting there on top of his bed he starts kissing me and i'm like i will didn't we come fetch your calculator and he's like no um i just wanted to spend some time with you and and and, and i'm like um but you're busy with study group and he's like ah it's just like 10 minutes of us spending time together and he starts kissing me and um and he starts taking off my tights and i'm like Ibo, what are you doing and he's like no we're not going to do anything you know whatever whatever and i'm like but then why are you taking off my clothes and then he just starts kissing me and it's like pinning me and everything and i just went dead quiet and then he did what he was doing and i remember going back to res and crying to a friend of mine and i was just like I don't know if I just lost my virginity or what just happened. And then my friend kept asking me, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Now, this person is my boyfriend, right? And as far as rape is concerned, we were always told that it's going to be like a stranger. It's going to be someone you don't like. So when my friend kept asking me, am I okay? In my head, I'm like, but he's my boyfriend. He couldn't have with me right and again and i went and i told my friends that hey so i slept with this person or this happened with this person and everything and my friends kept asking so how was it in it?" and i was just like i don't know i i, I don't know i i don't know and then for the longest time, because I remember, I still remember the date was on the 7th of May, um, on a Monday. And he was just like trying to hook up with me again. And I was just genuinely like avoiding him and everything. And I remember somebody convincing me or telling me that once you've had sex with someone, then they'll love you more or it'll strengthen the relationship or whatever and at that point in my life i wasn't even sure if that's the kind of love that i wanted i wasn't even sure if i even enjoyed the whole sex thing i i feel i just felt like i don't have any great experiences with this thing so whatever but now also the only person i ever wanted to have sex with is my husband so if i just had sex with this person surely he, he needs to marry me like then what are we doing if he's not going to marry me um so we did that 
I continued being in the relationship with that person, but more often than not, I always just like tried avoided being in secluded areas with him. Um, and it was just weird. And we just started having whenever he would want to see me. Um, if you remember my previous video, I was talking about how I had sex outside. It was with him because now I had avoided going to his room. But whenever he would meet up and then he would just start making out with me and he'd be like, he doesn't understand what he, but he's got a girlfriend. And eventually it was like Vec went home. And when I was at home, I prayed on it. I talked about it to like myself and stuff. Because now also I didn't really have like a really close relationship with my sisters like I do now. And... I just used to have like I used to filter a lot of conversations and a lot of things that I would speak to my sister and to anyone really about. So I couldn't talk to anyone about it and also my friends I felt like also I don't know. I just felt they weren't the right people to talk to about this thing. And eventually I came back second semester and I told this guy that listen, I don't wanna be with you anymore. And this guy was just like he was just, just like refusing to be dumped and i was like i am not want to be with you like I'm, not, I'm done with this relationship i'm done being your girlfriend i don't want any of it and to make it worse i then found out that he has a girlfriend back home so i'm like so you're not gonna marry me so why why are we doing this because i don't even like you you know um yeah let's just end this and he just refused and then i started having sex with other people because i was just like i no nah, i don't want none of this experience um like i'm done i i need to wipe it out of my head i need to get it out of my system um i kind of I had my first threesome because I was just like, um, whatever, like, let, let's just do this whole sex thing. Let's see what's so great about it. And yeah. And then I started cheating on him. I started having a um, sexual relationship with someone else. A friend of his found us and told him. And it was only then that we broke up. But even so, it was just like, he doesn't really want to break up with me. Um, he can maybe possibly forgive me, and I was like, Please don't forgive me. I genuinely want this thing to end, I want nothing to do with you. I, you know, but he just refused, and whatever. But now, before that, I had been raped again by a bus driver, I was on my way. Um, it was on the 3rd of October. <laughs> so weird how I remember all these days. Like, wow. Um, it was on the 3rd of October. And I was going back to school from home, Craddock. Um, and, and I remember... And I, I it's so weird because I remember that day. It was the weirdest thing because... My mom usually just like drops me off, I get on the bus and it's bye, bye, whatever. But that specific day, I remember I was with my friend of mine, Uzes, and my mom, they went. And they were busy talking to this bus driver and they're like, busy yelling at me, oh, I can take care of my child, yeah, 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 hey, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm just like laughing it off, get on the bus and shop. And I remember around about, before we got to Old Soren or something, and something was going on with the bus and whatever so this guy says to me ah come sleep here because i can see you're tired and there's no one in the bus you can come sit here by the driver's seat here at the back and i remember i had asked about the charging because the charging compartment where i was sitting was all working and he's like oh also you can charge your phone here and 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 cool i go sit there and then he comes to sit next to me and he's just busy 
being all weird and and then he says to me am i comfortable am i fine is there anything you can do to make me more comfortable and i was like no i'm fine thank you um i just need my phone and then he says to me oh yeah cool no i'll bring you your phone but i want to get to know you like listen this is like a really old man <laughs> and i'm just like oh, why because i don't even like talking to people but we sit and he comes and then he starts kissing me and i'm like shocked i'm like what are you doing and then he says that but i thought you wanted this and i'm like no please um i want to go back to my seat and then he's like i'm making a noise and then i keep quiet because now i'm like scared and also the bus was like literally not full because i remember there was about i don't even think there was more than 10 people on the entire bus and i was like, on the top deck and on there there was about three four people or something and i got so scared and he literally took off all my clothes and he raped me and i remember just sitting there crying and then when we got to george he came and he was like i'm embarrassing him i better just get dressed and get off the bus so i get dressed i get to school and i just isolate myself from people and yeah so i think honestly that's when i started um, having the sexual relationship with the guy that i was having a sexual relationship with and i was just not okay i just started drinking a lot i started not going to like like i was just not spending time with my friends i wasn't going to any social events i was literally the only person i was speaking to was this guy um but i'd never told him what was going on i stopped going to class i i just like my world just shut down so eventually then the boyfriend found out that this was happening and whatever and i was like you know what and i don't want to be with you i want to be like leave me alone and everything and it went on and on and on and so it couldn't go on anymore i remember i was sitting in the shower and i was crying when one of my friends found me and was like what the hell is going on and then eventually she went and told my my mom that this is what's happening this is what had happened to my friend at school and i went to therapy and i told um the therapist that hey this is going on the therapist was like listen ma'am please go home you can't stand because now i was just like stuck on campus because again the only way for me to get home is if i get on a bus go. so i'm just like i don't want to go back i i don't know like i don't want to go back on that bus i did you know but eventually i went home even at home i was just like all of the time i was at home i was crying i wasn't speaking to anyone um my mom finally came and she was like hey i got a call my friend she told me that this happened and whatever and she took me to the doctor got some tests done and everything and my mom was like we're not going to speak about this again deep down now i'm going through the most i'm just like okay like i was just miserable like i didn't want to leave my house imagine it's december everyone is out there everyone is having fun and now i'm just like i'm at home i want to go anywhere and you know and if i am in certain spaces i'm very jumpy and i was just just not myself right um and life went on to the 
and so the following year i went back on campus and it was just chaotic when i say chaotic i mean chaotic i was literally on a sex rampage um so what happened is that after the incident i had continuously been sleeping with the guy i was sleeping with and then he told me that he had an infection or whatever and he i'm the only person that he had been sleeping with so then eventually i think i ended up telling him that hey this is what happened to me so maybe whatever you have you got it from me and then i told my mom i was like ma'am whatever happened to my results because i want to know because also i can't tell my mom be like hey i think i gave someone something so you know and my mom was just like uh, what do i want to do with them why does it matter and then whatever but like we ended up fighting about it and then um and then cool and then eventually okay, my glasses are like dirty dirty okay cool so eventually i we end things we stop sleeping together and i go on a stage with rampage like i was literally anything with two legs and the third leg i was there i was just like let's do this <laughs> um but yeah which is bad bad and then i just started just being that girl and and everything was just bad and then in the space in the midst of all of that happening and somebody else um went and we were <sighs> we were friends i'd like to believe um and everything and he while we were sleeping carries me off a bed i was sleeping with someone else and he gets all busy with me and when i wake up i get up and i run into the shower and i'm crying and i confide in a friend of mine that hey this just happened uh wow that triggers me because i was later told by people even the one that i confided in would see i actually wanted that person and a lot of people isolated themselves from me and everyone hated me and everything and i went and i reported it and i remember the guy confronting me that i'm going around telling people that he's a rapist because <laughs> i <laughs> Oh. but yeah but i think um but just generally then like after that um i've just oh, i have a distrust of men I think um anyone who knows me knows i am the captain of the men are trash brigade and i just hate men <laughs> hate anything that has to do with men um and yeah so like a couple of things that i've picked up and i've learned um from my experiences is that one we're not educated enough on the whole rape or sexual harassment chat um one it doesn't have to have penetration um the fact that somebody is touching you or doing things to you that you, you are not comfortable with they the, that's like harassment they shouldn't be doing it you're not comfortable with it um yeah number two just because i did not scream out no or i didn't fight you or whatever it does not make it any less rapey than what it actually is it still is um rape even though i didn't scream no i didn't shout no and i think one of the things that i struggled with the most is that a lot of people whenever i would tell them about my stories is like but you didn't scream no you didn't fight did you, you didn't even say no so technically you can't say it was rape and 
the fact that I didn't give consent to it um, means that it was rape. Like, you didn't ask me for it. And I used to joke about it, like, a lot with, um, uh, with, with Mwam because he used to be like, um, consent is very weird <laughs> because this is now mean that I have to say, yes, I want to have sex with you. And as much as we joke about it, yeah, that's how it is. And sometimes just because a person kisses you back, it's not, yeah, obviously, like, it's implied consent and whatever, but just to make sure that lines are not blurred, I feel like we should generally be saying, yeah, I want to have sex with you, I want to do it now. And you guys should normalize asking, do you want to do this? And also, consent can be withdrawn at any moment. Can be withdrawn from the time that I walk into the door and I decide that I don't want to have sex with you anymore. It's it's done. I've withdrawn my consent. I don't want to do it anymore. You can't say, but we had a date. You knew you were coming here to have sex with me. Yeah, but when I got here, I decided I don't want to have it anymore. Right? Um, consent can be withdrawn when we are both all hot and bothered and naked on top of each other. Consent can be withdrawn from the time that you have had two or three strokes in and I decide I don't want to be a part of it anymore. The minute you continue to do it, you are in fact raping a person. Also, um, this whole thing that guys can't be raped, guys can be raped at any point. If you as a female are busy playing with a man or a guy or a boy's um, private parts and they don't feel comfortable that is indeed harassment and the thing and the fact that people will think it's okay and they'll make jokes about it would see ah, my other guy why would you say you're being raped when you're getting a free hand job or whatever if i'm if a person is not comfortable with it it is harassment it's not right whether they're male whether they're female the fact that girls joke about things like um Yo, now I would like my crush and I'm rape, I would get on top of him myself. Those aren't things that we should be saying. Um, it's things that we actually should frown upon and actually call out because if somebody were to say that to a girl, we wouldn't let it slide. It's not okay. Um, guys get raped often by women, by men, um, and it's not right. And we need to normalize not laughing at men speaking about their experiences because they are as valid as our experiences are. Um, my lessons that I've learned and I wish younger girls could also learn is the fact that the, the guys that we, we date, the people that we are in relationships with, they can rape us. I'm always having this chat with people where people are like, but how can I rape my girlfriend? How can I rape my wife? Because you are my person and I'm sleeping next to you and whatever. Um, rape is the absence of consent. If me as your wife or your girlfriend, I don't want to have sex with you, you are indeed raping me. And I can go and arrest you. If I am doing something and you say no, then... You know, um, as somebody who has gone through the most in terms of like rape and sexual harassment, I don't even find those jokes funny where people will be like, Oh, and um, like sex, you know, and phony and I don't, I don't like those things. They're not funny because other people think it's a joke that it'll start off as, if you're going to coerce me or try and convince me to have sex with you, that is very rapey because i don't want to do it but because now you are convincing me and whatever i end up doing it because i want you to stop that's right stop it um if people don't want to do things to you with your body with their bodies please don't do it please allow people the space to not do it um i've gotten to a point where I get into relationships and I always make sure that it's something that I don't hide. I tell you that, hey, this is what's happened to me because I need you to be aware that I know what my triggers are. And I know that if I don't want to have sex with you, I don't want to have it. And you need to respect that I don't want to have it. Like even in terms of like 
um, withdrawing consent. I had a partner where we used to have um, sex and I'd be all tied, tied up and blindfolded and whatever. But the minute I feel like, um, I don't want this anymore, it was done. We weren't going to do it. We stop, I get dressed, we cuddle and watch a movie and life goes on. This thing of people being with boyfriends that are going to shout at them and be mad at them, withdraw um, affection, um, withdraw conversation and they just, you know, will be ending it because now you don't want to give person sex. <laughs> It's very rapey, guys. It's it's wrong. Stop doing it, okay? So, um, I feel like we just need to talk more about it. We need to talk more about the impact it has on us, which I'll talk about it in my next video. And it's just generally how we need to be better and we need to do better. And we need to allow people the space to be themselves and respect the person's wishes you know um it's just so sad how so many girls came up to me and like when i started opening up about me being raped like a lot of people came up to me and they would talk to me and they'd tell me that hey i dated this guy because he raped me and i felt like i needed to because this had happened to me um i had so many people that would come up to me and they would tell me that i was almost raped by my mom's husband but i couldn't tell them because they don't believe me because i'm such a promiscuous child which for me was also a thing like i was just those girls who walk around i still am i walk around my house personally i walk around the house naked my brothers hate me for it um in public i wear bum shorts and crop tops and whatever not an invitation to get raped um, but I grew up thinking that if I were to report any of the things that happened to me, the first thing people would say is, Anditi Vele, she's always dressed like that. I'm always around boys. So Anditi Vele, that's why she got raped because she's always around men and boys and whatever. And we need to break all those stigmas. We need to break the stigmas of don't talk to anyone about it. Don't tell anyone about it. Don't, um, you know, all of those things. And I don't believe in those things. I don't participate in those conversations. Um, I even always tell young ones, if you feel like you need somebody to talk to and you don't know who to talk to, you can come and talk to me. Um, I found that talking about rape no longer triggers me. Um, obviously, I'll feel some type of way about it, but but yeah. So, okay, I don't want to say if you have your own experiences or whatever, um, comment down below because that would be very weird. But yeah if you do feel like you need somebody to talk to you can drop me a dm on my instagram or my twitter um my handle's down below and and yeah like i'm 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 a huge supporter of talking and getting it out there and getting people to support you in any way possible and rest assured when men do what they do to us they know that they're doing it because you know years later in fact not even years later i feel like a few months later because it was in october and then in january that man called me and he the, um i didn't even know it was him so now i'm answering my phone i still remember it was right to learn school and stuff and he calls and he says i remember hanging up and crying and i called my sister and i was like not this man calling me so men are very much aware the guy who raped me in my sleep years later he called me and he apologized for what he had done this is the same man who had confronted me and was on some why are you going around telling people that i'm a rapist so men know they always know um, they are fully aware of their actions, but they use the fact that we will never report. They use the fact that of like our personalities, our weaknesses, they use those things against us. And they're always telling, telling themselves and people, Uguti, it's not like that. The guy who tried to sleep with me, go graveyard. He went around and he told everyone that he had sex with me. And I was just like, what? Also, what are you telling people? I so people you know so things like that and 
and the guys are always willing and wanting to also get their narrative out there for everyone else to make you seem like the crazy one for making it seem like you asked for it and everything and then putting you in a corner where you end up feeling like you can't talk about it or you shouldn't talk about it right and it's so weird how i can't even mention their names because it's legal <laughs> they could literally arrest me because the justice system protects these niggers because i never laid any charges against them and they were never found guilty in the court of law i can't say that mang mang and mang mang and mang mang raped me because south africa our land but anyway um don't forget to like maybe share with people who've gone through similar experiences and have been scared to talk um or just somebody to let them know that you're not the only one these things happen to the most of us and to all of us um and yeah just follow me and subscribe switch on your notification for my follow-up video part two on the impact of how this whole experience or these experiences have affected my life bye